All right, hello everyone. Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop and using different file formats and what each format is best suited for. So before we get started, if you guys head over to my website at FindingMiddleEarth.com, just click the big subscribe button in the top right and uh, pop your email address in the box and you'll get access to a free 45 minute video going through all my landscape photography gear, my camera bags, uh, stuff inside the bags, outside the bags, all that good stuff and it's completely free. Uh, and then also my landscape photography post-processing and HDR blending course is still on sale for only $25. Uh, I just had a, a lot of positive feedback about it and again, I just wanna make it so super affordable so you guys learn Photoshop. Uh, so it's still $25. I don't know exactly when I'm gonna uh, remove that price, but get it while you can, because that's the cheapest you're ever gonna see it. Uh, so go ahead and grab that while you can. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the uh, Photoshop and Lightroom talk here. So this is just uh, a random old PSD file uh, that I opened semi-recently here because I made some changes uh, to send it off to print for uh, a local gallery that wanted this specific photo to show for uh, just a, a small little weekend exhibit. Uh, so I had to open this back up, make a few little changes to the processing uh, in order to uh, prep it for print. And when I did that, I actually tipped the file over to a larger size than what a regular PSD file can hold, okay? So uh, just so you guys know, so a PSD file, which is Photoshop document, it can hold uh, the data and all the changes and all the edits that you do within it, it can hold two gigabytes in size. And if it, if it uh, exceeds two gigabytes, then you have to make some changes to it. You can either merge all of your layers and flatten everything down that you've done, which basically makes it a very non-linear workflow going forward, right? You just eliminated all your options going forward and you've merged everything into just one single layer. So that will flatten it significantly and then you can save it as a PSD and you're fine because it's not gonna exceed uh, two gigabytes as just one layer. Um, or you can uh, save it as a TIFF file, okay? Because a TIFF file will give you a four gigabyte uh, size limit. Uh, however, I prefer not to work in TIFF files anymore because I jump around to a few different softwares and over the years with my experience using TIFF files, you can run into some weird compatibility issues uh, and some, meta, some metadata issues that I've experienced only with TIFF. So I personally don't use TIFF. If you would like to do that, that's fine. Um, or you can do the best option, which is uh, take the PSD file like we have here and save it as a PSB file and that stands for Photoshop big now Photoshop big uh, is pretty much limitless for its file size. I think it's something like, uh, I think Photoshop says on their website, or I'm sorry, Adobe on their website says it can hold a, a, an exabyte of data, which I think is something like a, what, like a million terabytes or something crazy like that. So it's it's limitless basically, okay? You, you, can, you can go forever with a PSB file and that way you're not locked down to a file size. But when you do that, some issues arise, okay? So you can't import the PSB file back into Lightroom. Lightroom won't even recognize it. Uh, it it's just, I guess it's just too large of a file that Lightroom doesn't want to create a preview for it. It is kind of weird that Adobe hasn't figured out a way around that yet, uh, but I'm gonna show you a little way around that that I've figured out kind of the best for my workflow. Because now, why is it an issue that you can't get it back into Lightroom as long as you know it's still in that folder on your computer? Well, the issue arises with it's not in your library of photos. It's not in your catalog inside of Lightroom. So what if you forget about it? What if you forget that you edited it? What if you forget what it looks like? If you come back in a couple days and you wanna make some changes to that photo, you always have to go into your computer's file management system and find it manually, whereas all of my other photos, I can just hop into my raw processor like Lightroom or Capture One or On One, and you can just see everything right there easily laid out. So there's a way around this, all right? So this is, this is gonna be an example. So you can see down here in the PSD, it says my estimated file size is 3.08 gigabytes. Now, sometimes Photoshop can be really wrong with this. Sometimes it can be like a gigabyte off. So go ahead and try to save it as a PSD. And if it saves, then you're, you're solid and you're good to go. And if it doesn't, then you know you need to do something else. Save it as a, a TIFF or a PSB. Like I said, I'm not a, a huge fan of TIFFs, so I already saved this as a PSB file, okay? So you can see up here in the name, I have the file name 
underscore blend because this was an exposure blend. And then I have it named, all of my PSB files have a little parentheses and they're named layers PSB. That way I just quickly know in that little parentheses box that this is the full PSB file that contains all of my layers. You can see over here, I have my blend group over here and then my post-processing group. That is all the changes, the slight little tweaks that I've made to color correction and contrast and all that stuff. Okay, so I have all that here. This is my three gigabyte file and I need to uh, now figure out how to get a version of this into Lightroom to make it easy for my workflow to be able to see my edited files. Because if we hop over to Lightroom, right here, these three files right here that are five starred, these are my uh, raw files that made that image. And these, you know, right here, Somewhere here to the left or the right of these is where I would normally have my full edited file. Uh, but like I said, the PSB file, you can't import it in here. So we need to get a version of that edited file back into Lightroom. So what we're gonna do is this, okay? It's actually pretty easy. So if you go up, so if you go up to select and select all, okay? Just, you'll see the little marching ants come around this. Just go ahead and hit Command C on your keyboard or Control C if you're on a PC. And then go to file and new and the little dialog box is gonna pop up that you're used to. And because we're working in this current PSD file, all of the settings should all be the same. So just go ahead and double check that the width and height is everything uh, kind of mimicked off of this current file we're working on, which is what we want. And then just go ahead and hit create. Okay, now at this point, this is a completely separate uh, file from our original PSD file that's over here. But here's how we're going to link them. We're going to go to file and place linked right here. And when you do that, it's gonna open up the dialog box and it's gonna want you to go to the folder on your computer where that file is. So I'm gonna scroll down and I know it's right here where it says blend layers PSB. I want to link this file over here, this new file that we created. I wanna link it to the PSB file. So let's click place and you'll see in just a second, it might take a minute depending on how big the file is. It's going to create a single merged layer that is a smart object that is linked to that PSB file. Okay, so we'll just let this load and then we'll come back in just a second. All right, so everything finished here, creating the single smart object layer uh, from the large PSB file over here. By the way, to get the little marching ants off, just hit Command D and it'll deselect everything. So if we go over here, this is our new layer. This is the linked layer to this PSB file. And this, you can see down here, is only 179.5 megabytes, so a huge file size difference. So with this file, what we wanna do is do a file save as, all right, I'm gonna save it in the same folder, so the fall colors photo, uh, folder that, that my regular PSB file is in, okay? And we're, we're gonna name it the same name as the PSB file, uh, except with just a slight change. Let me find that PSB file real quick so I can get the name on it, because I already forgot the file name. It's uh, DSC8566, all right, so we'll do DSC8566 five, six, six, underscore blend. And then this time I, I do a parentheses and I type in linked PSB. Whereas the other one down here you can see is layers PSB. So I know this is the linked file and I do not want to save it as a large document format, which is a PSB. This time I can save it as a PSD, which is my uh, preferred format of saving things. So it's a PSD file because it is not, it is no longer exceeding two gigabytes and I have it marked as linked PSB. So that way I know, and it's in the same folder as the regular full size PSB. So let's just hit save on that and we'll do maximum compatibility, that's fine. That's gonna save pretty quick down here, you'll see, cause it's, again, it's only 175 megabytes. It's not a huge three gigabyte file like it is over here. And then when we're done with that, we can now hop over to Lightroom and we can just right click this folder. Let's go to, uh, let's go to the grid view here. Let me scroll down to where that uh, file, here we go. Here's the files up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click this folder and do synchronize folder. And when we do that, it'll notice that there is one importable photo um, that has now entered that folder. And the reason why it's not saying two is because remember, Lightroom doesn't even recognize the PSB file. It won't even recognize it for an import. So it knows that we have that new PSD file in there. We can just hit synchronize, and then that will actually import that new linked file that we've just done. There you go, look, linked PSB, or sorry, PSD, but it is a linked PSB uh, 
labeled file here, but it's actually a .psd file. So we can just do add, we'll go ahead and finish the import on that. And now that will add that new file right in there for us. And we can go just confirm that here. Let's go back to that folder where we at it's a fall colors folder somewhere over here. Uh, let's see. Um, I knew I was going to lose my place at some point in this video. There we go. Fall colors. And we can make sure it's sorted by capture time. Or we could even do file name. It doesn't really matter. Uh, however you want to do it. Or custom order. Let's just do name. Uh, where, where's file name there. And doing it by file name, we'll just shoot it right up here with my other raw files because I named it the I named it the name I always like to, to name the blend file the name of the uh, kind of middle exposure uh, of my bracketed files uh, or if it's just a single file I'll name it the same name same name as the single file and just add blend and then you know whatever in parentheses on the end linked PSB or PSD whatever so there we go there is my file I can go ahead and five star that and so here is uh, just kind of the last step right so let's say that I decide I want to make a change to this. Let's say that I come back in a few days, I double click this to open it and I say, hmm, uh, I might want to make this black and white actually, or I might want to uh, make some changes, permanent, some permanent changes to this. I actually don't like what I did on this. Let's say that I, I think the sky needs to be a little warmer and a little less blue or something. Well, what we do is we select that linked PSB file. We hit command E, Okay, which will open it in Photoshop. And we make, sh make sure that you have edit original. If you have any of these, it's gonna mess it up. So do a edit original and do edit. That's gonna open up this linked PSD file. We can go and close these, by the way, the other two that we had open. All right, sorry about that. I had to close the other two documents there. So now we're left with this, uh, this file that we just opened from Lightroom where we did the uh, Command E and Edit Original. So here we are with this file. So what happens, like I said, if I wanted to make some kind of permanent change and change my mind about something with the processing? Well, since this is a linked file and this opened uh, as a smart object, all we have to do is double click the layer over here. So let's double click that layer. You'll see it's taken a second to run a little process. And it's basically going to, because it's linked to the PSB file, it's going to open and prompt Photoshop to open that PSB file. So watch what happens. I'll just, do, I'll just give you guys a quick example here while this is opening. Okay, so now you can see what that did. When we double clicked the layer, the smart object layer over here, it prompted Photoshop to open our full size PSB file. So now if we wanted to make a change with this, let's just do something crazy so you guys can see this. We'll just create a curves layer and just make it really wonky looking. Okay, so now all we have to do is hit file save on this, uh, the master, you know, the full size PSB file, hit file save. This is gonna take a minute to save, definitely, because it's a large file. All right, and now that this finally finished saving, the coolest part about linking the files is, if we go back to the linked file, you can see that has already updated the change. It's automatic because we linked the files. So the change that we made over here with the full PSB file, updated the linked file. So now all we have to do is do a quick file save on this linked file because this is the file that we imported into Lightroom. So this one's gonna save quickly as always because it's a much smaller file. And we never have to add any more than just this one single layer that's the smart object. So as soon as that is done saving, we can pop back over to Lightroom and you'll see Lightroom very quickly update itself on that new edit and there you go. So pretty cool. Now that that is a linked file, this is our kind of our uh, liaison between uh, Lightroom and that huge uh, PSB file that, that we created. So there you go. It just updated itself automatically to that new funky edit that I'm about to go change and undo after I finish recording this video because it looks horrible. But for uh, example purposes, I think you guys get the drift. So PSD files hold two gigabytes of file size. If, the, if you exceed that, uh, save it as a PSB, and then when you're done editing your photo in your PSB, create a new file, link it to that file, import it into Lightroom, and you're solid. That's a really good workflow to work on. I've been doing that now for a while, and it's been working really nice for me, because uh, I just use PSD, PSB. Uh, the only time I really do TIFF is if uh, uh, sometimes uh, a certain print lab will request that I send them uh, the file in TIFF instead of a uh, JPEG or PSD. So mainly I just use TIFF if I'm sending to a print lab. For my workflow, I like PSD and PSB files. They work really well for me, they have for years. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions about this, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. 
And if you would like to find out more about me and how you can improve your photography, please check out my premium tutorials at findingmiddleearth.com slash store.